do you think that narcissists believe that and I, I'm I don't I don't know if you're a narcissist or not, so this isn't some kind of veiled attack. I'm genuinely curious. Um, because I have a follow-up question. Do you think that narcissists believe that they are that they have that they're objectively better in some ways than other people? Hey man, how are you? Can you can you hear me? Yeah, thank you for being so patient. I'm sorry about uh, the confusion earlier. No, it's fine. Earlier. It's fine. It's fine. If you can help um, people, I don't mind. Yeah. Um, also, what I want to say: Do you hear echo when you're talking? I I don't hear echo. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Awesome. Okay. And and just volume wise, we're, we're doing okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hearing you clear, clear. Okay. Let me just. Um, all right. So, I think, uh, can you tell me a little bit about um, um, what? Uh, so I'm not quite sure exactly how this got set up, but there were people in in my chat who wanted me to talk to you. Yeah, because I have quite a controversial reputation on the internet, and people love to see uh, drama. So they love to see, you know, like I talk a lot about, you know, uh, being responsible and stuff on the live stream, and I've even I even run my own place and such and. Uh, I can say things that sometimes are very confrontational and uh, I got myself a little bit of a, a cult guru reputation and that's why they they like the idea of you know me talking to you because some for for the drama sake some to see if there's something inter uh, interesting that comes out of it everybody has their a little bit their own motivation um, what are you yeah, hoping like, to get out of it like for me, the, the the reason why I think it's a I, I didn't mind having a chat because um, I can potentially learn from you, and uh, you can potentially learn from me. And uh, if our intent is to help out other people, this conversation could prove to be very fruitful. Uh, that's one one aspect of it. The other aspect is also that. Um, even if that is not what it leads to, people will get a better idea and view about, you know, how I think and how I see things and how you think and how you see things. And uh, either way, uh, I, I do think that the outcome will be positive either way. So sure. my goal with this talk is not to to contri create controversy or drama. Uh, I, I, I checked a bit a few of your streams. And, uh, well, I, I just skipped through it and I, I checked, I saw your Dharma, uh, approach, like the, the, the Dharma AOE. And I looked a bit into it and, uh, like being responsible and quite action oriented. I, I really like that. Um, sure. Cause it's, it's, okay. it's the, it's the, you know, it's the direction I steer people into as well. Um, so yeah, like why, why are you doing all of this? Why am I, why do I stream? Why do you, you know, yeah. Why do you stream? Why do you, uh, because I also know you have a, a website, healthy gamers. Uh, yeah. Like what, what is the, yeah. What is it for you? What is your intent? What is your true motivation for what so, you're doing? So my motivation is Dharma. So I, I believe that doing this is my duty or responsibility. And what I mean by yeah. that in, in a much more, so that sounds like kind of fancy, but I think in a simple sense, I've had a very unique, um, a couple of very unique opportunities in my life. So I was addicted to video games slash almost failed out of college from playing too many video games and then studied for several years to become a monk and then ended up becoming a psychiatrist. And in, in the process of training to become a psychiatrist, I started asking a lot of my professors and, and supervisors about video game addiction. And then really no one knew anything because it's a relatively new phenomenon. I think technology and social media and the way that they affect minds and, and brains is like people just don't understand that. Um, yeah. And so really no one knew much about it. So about five years ago, I just started asking gamers like, you know, why do you play video games? Do you want to play fewer video games? And why can't you stop? And the more that I've worked with gamers, so I, I, you know, I've sort of started streaming actually only three months ago. And having worked with people for about five years now, I've realized that like a lot of people have the same problems. So that I was essentially having the same conversations with like 
dozens or hundreds of people and realized that basically we need to AOE this stuff, right? So instead of having, and that I, could, I couldn't get to everyone. So uh, about one year ago, a little over a year ago, um, I posted an, an AMA thread on Reddit and just said I'm a, I'm a psychiatrist who's interested in video game addiction and got thousands of messages. People were like paging me at the hospital and stuff like that. I got calls from all over the world, actually, for parents and people who were struggling and didn't, didn't know how to get help. And so I realized that like I can't, you know, I can be a psychiatrist and work in my office and see 40 patients a week and I will never, it'll never be enough. And so I need to so, change. So if, if I get it right, you, you actually want to help people in, in the most effective manner you can. What do you mean by or effective? Like, uh, to give a comparison, rather than having 40 patients, you'd rather like reach thousands. If you yeah, because, because no one else is, right? So yes. if someone else is doing it, then that's fine. But right now, like the overwhelming message that I get is that gamers who go and see a psychiatrist get diagnosed so, with depression, get started yeah. on medication, and then six months later, their life is exactly the same. And, and why, why, why do you, why, why is it something that, you know, because I'm just trying to, to understand the motive and the drive and such, right? Like, why do you want to reach many instead of just 40? Because many For reach out to me. Is it because of the reach out to so, you? So, so, like, like... so uh, that's a good. So uh, the reason I asked about effectiveness is because I see a big difference between public health and clinical medicine. So there are some interventions that we do that affect a population, but don't affect the population as profoundly as an individual. So what I enjoy doing the most is working with individuals. I actually think that's the most effective. That in order for me yeah. to help someone, if I get one hour a week with them for like six months, that person is like different at the end of that. And one of the struggles that I have with doing this is that I meet with people once and we sort of really try to make things like super cross-sectional and I try to help them out a little bit, but I don't know if this is actually helping people. What you're doing right now? Yeah. By talking to all these people on, yep. on online. I mean, people I I... say it's helping. Right. So the, the so, last so interview, the last so basically interview is helping good. is part of the equation. You, you really want yeah. to help people. Yeah. And you want you want to be able to help as much as you can. Yeah. Why? Because I can. So let me put it to you this way. So I think dharma is so dharma is related to karma. So karma is sort of like the idea of like circumstance. Right. So like. This, so I, I think that I've been given a relatively unique background. And so that comes with a certain obligation. So let me put it to you this way. Let's say that the two of us are sitting at a park bench and I have two sandwiches and you have none and both of us are hungry. I believe that I should give you a sandwich just because I have two and you have none. That there's just sort of a karmic setup there that like, if I'm able to do something, like who else is going to do it? Because the, the really okay, scary, can I, yeah. Can, 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 I give a, can I give another example? Sure. Because I, I like the park bench. Let's say you're on the park bench and uh, you have two sandwiches, right? And the person next to you didn't eat all day, right? And the person on the other side of the, the park hasn't eaten for a week or a month. Who, who do you give the sandwich to? I, I don't understand how that analogy relates to our situation here. Well, like for me, because when, when, it, when, the, when the core is helping people, you try to help people where the needs is the biggest. And I'm just trying to use your, uh, your so example. So what do you think I should be doing instead? Well, I, I just want to, to understand the true intent and motivation of why you're helping people, because that w would give the answer to whether, it even, what, what, whether it's even relevant if something else would be better. Because what, what, I've, what I've realized and, and experienced myself in my life is a lot of the time when people are doing good, it's within their comfort. 
And when it, when it requires them to go outside their comfort, they start rationalizing why they shouldn't be doing this or they shouldn't be doing that. And, and then even mentioning what they could be doing better just causes conflict and has very little purpose. Like for me, my goal is not to pinpoint the inconsistencies. My, m what I tr just try to understand is what the intent is, because if the intent is really pure and, and really like, yeah, I want to help people where, 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 where the need is the biggest, and, and I am very, you know, honest about it towards myself. And I would even go out of my comfort zone because like, for example, the two sandwiches, if you're really hungry, you could eat them both. You go out of your comfort zone, giving a sandwich to the person next to you. But how far would you go? Would you, would you give it to two starving people next to you so and not me, eat a sandwich? Help me what? understand why it is, it is, help me understand why you want to understand my motivations and specifically it sounds like you're trying to figure out do i fall into the camp of helping people within my comfort zone or helping people outside of my comfort zone that seems to be what you're asking about or to which extent would you go out of your comfort zone in order to to basically follow uh the the dharma ideology yeah or, so yeah why do you think you're so you're curious about that right you're curious about me and to what degree I will step outside of my comfort zone to help people. Well, yeah, like it would be, it, it's, it's very interesting to know, yeah, to know these things because yeah. what I, what, yeah, yeah. So, I, I so people, people are curious about all kinds of things, right? Like some people are curious about what kind of product I put in my hair. Some people are curious about Yeah, but the background. reason why I'm curious about this is because it's very functional. It's like, if you can find a common what is, shared... What does that mean? Like, what I, what I mean with that is, if you can find a common uh, shared uh, foundation, then you can potentially get a lot more of the relationship than just this talk, for example. Like, if, 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 if you share... So you're looking for commonality between me and you. Because that I completely... I, I, I completely agree with... Because I, I, I think that's what you're looking for, too. So I, if that's what more you're implying. Than, more than commonality with you and me, I would say commonality with... Athena, uh, are you with, comparing us? No, like that's, that's exactly what I'm, what I'm trying to get to. For me, it's not about comparing to what I do because that's, that's not so relevant. To me, it's about understanding your connection to uh, giving back to the world, basically, and how strong that is and so isn't, how you... Isn't that yeah. like the central part of... I mean, just based on what you've said so far, I guess that that is a very central part of who you are, is that you are someone who gives back to the world. And I, I mean, I, I don't really I, know much, but that I would guess that you step outside of comfort zones that many other people would not. Well, the thing is, like, for, for me, rather than saying this is how I am or whatever, like, I, I don't really have an identity about it. I just got to do what I got to do. It's like water that flows down a mountain. Why, why does it flow down a mountain? It's just because it follows the path of what it is. And, and I think if you come to a certain so awareness what is, about... What is, what is, so let me ask you, what is the, how does the water flow down the mountain in terms of this example of like me sitting with a guy next to me and then a guy across the park who hasn't eaten for a week? Where, where does water to... flow there? Well, the, the, the thing is like... If you, if you grow up, right, and depending on how you've been conditioned and such, you are, you are very wired to follow how you feel yeah. rather and, and, and do what feels right rather than what is right, then your water will flow differently than if you go about it in a more analytical manner where you just see the impact for what it is and base your actions on that, even if it doesn't always feel as, 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 as good. And that's the thing. That's how you achieve very big impact by 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 playing the number game more so than playing the 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 the, the empathy game. And that's why. Uh, okay, so we help also, me yeah. help me understand something, Athene. So you were saying earlier that you don't really think about this stuff as your identity. You don't really yeah. think about whether you step out of your comfort zone. That you are essentially like like you have water that flows downhill, and so you have some sort of intrinsic drive to do something and you kind of don't question it you just do it it's not you it's just a natural process well let me let me bounce back the the question do i have a drive to breathe 
Yes. Okay. So, like, there is an actual active process in my brain going on where I say and remind myself to breathe. Yes. Because absolutely. maybe we're maybe we're miscommunicating. Well, no. Like, no so, so you that... you absolutely have parts of your brain that measure your CO two levels and O two levels. Yes, you have but it's not it's not part of my awareness. It's it's not part of my active awareness. It's not like. But let well, me give another example. Do 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 I have the drive? for my 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 blood cells to to you know hemoglobin to absorb uh oxygen from the air and distribute it to my organs do i have no. a drive to no. do that no no well just well, you by, by drive is... you by drive you're defining that as like a, an awareness or a motivation to consciously do that well what do you mean me, by drive it's... so yeah that that that's what what i'm trying to get to it's trying to figure out a common ground because to make sure we understand the same language. So for me, uh, like it's more a state of being rather than a drive. It's like uh, uh, I just wake up and I do what I got to do. And, and that's as simple as it is. There is no. Sure. So that's that's no... on one end of the spectrum and being analytical is on the other end of the spectrum. Well, but the thing is, though, like being analytical is part of just doing what I got to do because it's like, you know, uh, a computer that that processes, you know, a lot of data. It's also just doing what it has to do. And it's analyzing numbers like crazy as well. Like, uh, like, I just want to make sure that you understand what, what I mean. Like, it's just a, a state of... I, I, of I, do, I, I don't yeah. understand what, I, what you mean. And I think... But that's why problem... I'm trying to explain it. That's why I'm yeah, trying so to explain I, it. Like, I think it would be yeah. helpful. So generally speaking, in my experience, you let me know if your experience is different. Yeah. If they're, when I'm communicating with someone who doesn't understand what I mean and they ask a question, I find that instead of giving them an explanation or asking them a completely separate question, I find that like if someone asks me a question, if, I'm, if my goal is understanding, I just answer it, right? If someone asks me like, Alok, what do you put in your hair? Instead of talking about hemoglobin or red blood cells or using an analogy, I just answer the question that they ask. But so, like in communication, what is, what is crucial is for the other person to understand what you mean because else you're just explaining something based on your own experience and how you grew up and maybe the person won't even understand what you're trying to explain. So that's why for me it's very important to define certain concepts in a way that you understand them the way I'm trying to explain them because maybe I'm using words in a different way than you are or have a different meaning. And sure. as a result, we would be sure. So, so I, I, I completely agree that sometimes there's confusion about terminology and that it's important to, to like iron out those details. But what I'm really curious about is sometimes I ask you a question and instead of just answering the question and then us going from there, because maybe I understand what you mean, maybe I don't. So usually when someone answers a question, what I try to do is repeat back what I understood and then give them a chance to clarify. But what I'm noticing that you're doing is when I ask a question, you sort of ask me a question or talk about some sort of analogy. Like, do, do you see how that's the pattern of our communication? It's because I, I, go, I, I go within the concepts you use. If you talk about drive, I, I, I dive deeper into the word and what it actually means to me, which gives it a much a much more accurate answer than one where I would just answer more superficially in a way that, you know, uh, that, that. So um, accurate for who? I mean, accurate. So for when, who? when you give additional information, well, it gives, who, who it gives that, a lot of, who does that make things more accurate for yourself or for me? Well, it would give you a better understanding uh, in what I mean with drive but, and how it relates to but me. Athene, why, why don't you rely on me to ask the questions about the things that I don't understand instead of presuming what I do or don't understand and because then like telling me random conclusions. stuff? Huh? Because you might jump to conclusions based on the answers I give. Absolutely, you... man. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. So when I jump to a conclusion... I think it would be awesome if you point that out to me. Yes, and that's what I'm... And, yeah. and what I think would also be awesome is if I ask you a question, if instead of like 
talking about some sort of foundational analogy. You answer the question, and then you see if I jump to a conclusion. Like, if I ask you, is 2 plus 2 4? And then your answer is like, well, let's start talking about mathematics. And then you start talking about mathematics to make sure we're all on the same page. But if I ask you, is 2 plus 2 4? And then you say yes, and then I'm like, okay, great. We all agree that 2 plus 2 is 4. We don't have to go into the background. But even there, when you say, is 2 plus 2 4, even though that is, you know accurate in within a certain framework, you could argue in certain frameworks, two plus two is not equal four. Sure, so like you could argue a, anything with anyone. I know. Which is what we're doing, why, apparently. That, that, that is, but that is why what I always try to do is to avoid. Okay, so Athene, are, are, are you willing to answer questions in a way that may, I may find helpful? Or do you want to answer questions in the way that you think will best help me understand? Like, are we going to rely on my judgment oh. to, to help me? Like, like if I ask you a question about your preferences or your beliefs, do you think like I, it's really important for you to lay that foundation? Or is it possible for you to just answer a question and then correct me if I'm wrong? But that, that's the thing. If you, if you get to understand like how I see things, then a lot of these questions become irrelevant. Like, for example, beliefs. If you ask me, what do you believe in? Like, it's, it's very irrelevant to me because to me... I just look at reality and that's it. And things are the way they are and I accept them. My beliefs and even my feelings are merely tools for life to, 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 to thrive and to align with reality. Nothing more, nothing less. So I don't have an attachment to it. If, if, if I believe a certain thing, it's merely a tool to, 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 to be more aligned. But if tomorrow I get confronted otherwise, I change that belief. It's very moldable. It's adaptable. And that's the thing like when, 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 um, when, when certain value is being given on certain concepts I bring up, people, and maybe also perhaps you, might get the wrong ID. And that's why I'm trying to explain, like, yeah, I just, I just do what I so got to do. And here's, things come here's, what I'm, here's what I'm hearing from you, Athene. You're very concerned about people getting the wrong idea. And it's very important for you that they appropriately understand you. No, I, I don't find it important. Like, but then, because wait, 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 so I, I've come to second. acceptance that... Stop, stop for a second. This yeah. whole conversation is about me asking you a question and then you taking a painstaking and deliberate approach to making sure that I don't jump to conclusions. Correct? Like, that's exactly what you've been saying. More, more so is for you to understand what I mean. Absolutely. So then I just asked you a question. It seems very important that you are not misunderstood, that other people understand what you're trying to say and don't misrepresent if, your beliefs. That's if, what I'm if, asking. If right? you value, if you, if you value understanding me, then I, I deem to show the respect to explain things the way I would explain it to myself. So if, if I was you... Is that a yes? I'm confused. So it's my impression that... You were, it's very important to you that I understand things and I don't jump to conclusions and that you want to explain things to me in a way where like, I understand your foundation. I understand your logic. I understand where you start from. I understand your foundational beliefs so that I can understand what you're saying. That's what you're trying to do, right? Like I ask you a question and instead of answering the question, you make sure you lay the foundation so there's no misunderstanding between us. That's what we're doing here, right? If 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 that is the the is if that is what you value within the conversation to understand me, then then yes, I want to make sure that I explain it. But in I'm, a way. I'm not. I, I'm asking you what you value in a conversation because I'm asking you a question, and based on your response, okay, okay. it what seems I, like what I what I value what I value in a, a conversation is for the conversation to lead to positive results. Okay, so. What I'm getting from you, so I, I understand that that sounds like sort of an abstract answer, but based on the way in which you're answering my questions, I think you are very concerned about being, and let me finish, I think about being misunderstood. And I also think that you are not comfortable with the idea that you're concerned about that. That if well, I tell <laughs> you that you're concerned about that, that you're going to respond with something telling me how you're not concerned about that because you're like water that flows down hills and water doesn't con- isn't concerned about anything. No, I'm not saying I'm not saying that I don't have emotions. Of course, I have emotions, but I don't. I just don't value them. Like uh, what, I completely. What I val- 
I completely well, understand that. So, so like I just said, like you're not going to be, you're not going to, you're not going to believe or value the fact that you are concerned about being misunderstood. But the thing is, though, like I, I don't really, I don't really mind whether I'm being misunderstood or not. Like for me, I just want to understand that, whether that's we what, are on but, the same page. That's all. Yeah. Right. So, so like that's exactly what I just said. Right. Like you are not going to accept or agree to the fact that you are concerned about being misunderstood. And you just said that. Well, Whereas, I, I, don't ex- I don't experience any concern of being misunderstood. Like I, I me, completely, I just, that I understand. I, I don't think you experience the concern. What I'm saying is that if you analyze our conversation, you have a very, very important goal in the conversation to not be misunderstood. And since you devalue well, emotions... I'm sure you experienced them. Wait, wait, wait. What I value is that we have proper communication. Yeah. So that when you ask me a question that I give you a nice, uh, you know, a nice overview. So you have a good, a good, a good view in what I mean and and, and, and what I'm trying to explain. Like that that is what I I want. can Can I try to rephrase that to you? So what you value in a conversation is to be understood. That's what you just said, right? Like, no. What I value in a conversation is that it has positive results. Being understood or not is just a tool in order to get positive results. For me, if I know we are on the same page, then understanding each other is by far the most effective approach in order to have the best positive results. But if we are not on the same page, then communication is merely a tool for both of us to achieve the goal while we have the conversation to begin with. So Are you misunderstood, on... Athene? Say what? Are you misunderstood? When? In general. No. In general. Well, people call me a cult leader and stuff like, I don't even, like, it, yeah, yeah, people, yeah, I would say lack of understanding, yes. A lot of, is, is a, a very big of lack of understanding by, by, by a big What's amount of people like? on, on the internet. How do you mean? Like, what's that like for you? Well, I focus on the people that I can work with to to have an impact in the world. Sure. Because, I mean, like, I, you... I, I'm not I'm not busy with with like like if 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 there's a lot of misery in the world, right? To put it, I, I like to use analogies because it's it it makes things very simple to understand. Like, if there's all the misery in the world, <laughs> yeah, how so is know, that for me? You know, the other thing like, that analogies do, Athene, is they separate us from the equation, right? They become abstract and it no longer becomes personal when you n- use an analogy. And it allows you to to have a, a a better you know analytical view on the on the problem and make better decisions. Absolutely. So I, I think well I I think it allows you to have a more analytical view because when you use an analogy you remove yourself from the equation. Right. You're not talking about you anymore. You're talking about a third party. Well. So it sort of makes sense to me a, that you in, really in like a conversation analogies. where yeah in a conversation where you talk to thousands of people, it's very effective to do so because if I talk more about uh about my own personal experience it might be a little bit you know it, it might be alienating for some people while if i use certain analogies where people can have an easier time to relate with i can resonate with more people Athene, you know what i think would be awesome like i would love it if you could do me a favor i yeah. want you to just tell like don't talk about analogies like what i am curious about what i would like to understand is not okay. analogies but is you and if you're concerned about alienating me, like, as I know you're not concerned about mi- being misunderstood, because you've made that very, very clear that you're not concerned about being misunderstood, but that sometimes there's a chance that you alienate people when you answer questions about yourself, I'm okay with that. Like, I would love it if you could put faith in me and understand that, like, even if you talk about yourself, that, like, I'm not going to be alienated, or if I do feel alienated, I'll let you know, and then you can set me straight. So you're telling me I can trust you. Uh, I'm asking you to trust me. I'm asking you to not worry about alienating me and tell me about yourself because that's what I'm curious about. So like, why are you curious about myself? Because you're here. Like, I'm, I'd am i like to understand you. That's, that's and, what I'm, that's what I, if, what, that's what I stream do, for, to talk to individuals. And do, you tru- do you truly want to understand me? I think so. 
Yeah. But that 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 question implies that there may be some part of the understanding. Like, so that's just a weird question. Do I truly want to understand you? No, that it's impli- important because because if how if would I know broke, the difference between wanting to understand you and truly wanting to understand you? I think like, I think that's the same. Truly, if your true intent is to understand me rather than uh, understanding, wanting to understand me for another, you know, separate goal, the the intent for which you are trying to understand me will highly uh, define the way you go about it. Like seeking first to understand and putting yourself in other people's shoes to truly see the world through their eyes and, and try to understand it has always, you know, has, has, has a reason behind it. Uh, it yeah. can be yeah. because you want to achieve something yourself. And depending on what your own goal is, your own motive is, you will, this process of trying to understand me will be different. Like it might it might uh, su- uh can i jump might, in uh, I-, yeah. I know you're on a roll but so like i completely agree with you so like i just want to point out what i think just happened there so you asked me do you truly want to understand me i expressed confusion about some th- your question and then you provided an explanation and now i understand what you mean and my confusion is gone and i do truly yeah. want to understand you okay and then let me tell you my true motivation for okay. this conversation is to see or to understand if we both are on the same page in terms of truly wanting to help people. Because if you want to help people and I want to help people and we are truly, you know, like, like, like going about it in the most effective manner and wanting to do it really because it's just the right thing to do and we are responsible to do so, then uh then 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 uh just a conversation is not the 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 only you know we can do a lot more than just having a conversation we can literally you know uh uh collaborate uh and 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 work together uh not saying that that's going to happen i'm just saying like what i realize is when it comes down to like-minded people that truly want to give back to the world organizing yourself and working together allows you to elevate your impact drastically. So that is, you know, uh, why for me, like initially, that's what I'm trying to understand, your intent, your like, like go you, do you go about it in a scientific way, helping people, is everybody equal? Do you see people, you know, like in, in, you know, that are starving as equal as gamers? Like, do you see every human as equal? So where do you put your resources? Where do you put your energy? Go, do you go about it very scientifically and go like, okay, if I can help so many people there, that is more important than, you know, this or that. Like, that is what I want to try and understand. And if that is not the case, which, which I'm fine with, then it's about then then the conversation becomes more about like ah what is your true true intent and how do you you know how how do you um, how do you uh, find a, a a relationship with yourself when you know that truly helping people is not part of the equation but rather uh, it's a mean within your comfort that is that is the you know that is basically uh, the sequence of my m- my true intent of this conversation. So if you truly want to understand me, that is what I would like to know. So, and, and if you have questions in that context, great. But I would also like to know your side of these things. Sure. Where you so stand. first of all, Athena, I want to start by expressing gratitude. So I am so grateful that you, instead of using analogies, instead of asking me questions, that you just shared a perspective about yourself, right? Like you just talked about why you're coming on, on stream and why we're having this conversation, what your motivations are. That I, I'm really grateful for because that helps me instead of like asking, like talking about abstract concepts, it sounds like you're here because you're you're wondering like where I'm coming from, whether our, our goals are aligned and whether there's an opportunity for collaboration. And yes. if if I our, our vision is not aligned, if I have not met some standard that, your that you have for yourself or that some I, I'm, uh, that's it's still yeah, fuzzy you can simplify me. it like that sure I, yes, I, yes. I, i'm just it's fuzzy then yeah. then you maybe you're curious about if if i'm not like you then like what am i like and why am i like that way yes yes yeah exactly that is yeah. that is really yeah well see put, th- yeah. i i think this this works way better when we stop using analogies and we actually just like start talking to each other and making sure if we're on the same page Right. Yes. Okay. So thank you for doing that. That that style of communication helps me way more. 
Um, so, I mean, so can I tell you why I why I'm here to have this conversation? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I would love to. Yeah. So, um, I I'm just here to talk to people because you know you kind of talk about like whether I'm in it to help people and and whether I sort of know whether I'm analytical and and do I want to distribute resources in a fair way and things like that. I mean, I think the short answer is yes, but I'm not very confident. So I think that I'm a human being and I'm prone to bias. And although I'm a smart guy and I'm an analytical guy, and I've trained for years in formal systems to understand things like bias and emotions and the origins of desires and things like that, as well as studying neuroscience and psychology and psychiatry, that at the end of the day, I'm like sort of a flawed instrument because that's what humans are, that humans are not really logical creatures, that like we have a lot of other things that drive our behavior. So I'm here to do the best that I can, but I'm guessing that your commitment is way higher than mine. So I also tend to be like somewhat of a really like balanced guy in life in terms of like, I and I, I don't, not, nothing about yours, so I apologize if, if this is being judgmental, but I enjoy playing video games. Um, I understand you do too, so maybe we're not that different. But uh, that, you know, I, I mean, I basically wake up and I try to help who I can in the way that I can until I'm done helping people and I need some time to recuperate or regenerate. And then I sort of like will go home and I'll, I'll do like, you know, simple things and, and be a regular human. And then I come back three times a week to hop on stream and I try to help whoever the universe puts in front of me. And by the universe, I mean, Dank Moses, who sets up, who comes on here. So, uh, so. Uh, and so as, I don't know I, if that uh, is, is, does that fit? It, that's, it's, that's what I'm about. It, it's 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 a it's an answer that gives me an answer to the question like yeah because like the way I go about it I I take it uh, I take the, my commitment a, a lot further and it might be connected with uh, confidence because you you initiated your response by saying you're not that confident because you have your own flaws and I do know we all have our own flaws but the the beauty about humans is the ability to learn from our flaws and and and, and improve it. And uh, and not to settle with our flaws and think, uh, try try to do better and better. I think and, are you the getting question, the impression that I'm not confident? Uh, it's what you said. You started your answer by saying like yeah. So I, I'm you, asking you. So so your impression of me? Would you say that I come across as lacking in confidence? I think I think my impression of you is is actually irrelevant if I trust what you say because if you say you're not confident because of the human flaws, then I just accept that because you come across a confident, but it's not about how you come across. What you are is defined by what you are. And my my impression of you does not have to align with, with the facts of what you actually are. Therefore, I always question my impression. Like, and, and I just, I give you the benefit of the doubt and what you say, I just assume to be true unless okay. there is an inconsistency. Yeah, so I wouldn't say that I'm not confident. In fact, I feel pretty confident. I would say that I just acknowledge that I have flaws and that I'm not perfect and that there's a big difference. I would actually say that my confidence stems from understanding that I have limitations. So I used and to have way less confidence when I thought I was the best thing since sliced bread. As I've gained experience and studied a lot of different disciplines and worked a lot with different people, I, I've developed a lot of confidence out of understanding that I'm limited and that I make mistakes. And do you, do you see these mistakes and these limitations as a strength to do better or as a weakness of a human being? Uh, both, probably more of the, four, uh, more as a strength. So I, th I think that I tend to learn from my mistakes and that you should learn from your mistakes. And I think that no matter how many mistakes I learn from, I'm going to continue making mistakes, buddy. But the, the, the beauty is that as you keep learning from your mistakes, even though you still make mistakes, they will be, you know, they will be from a different type and won't be always the same as the previous ones you've made. So, for example, if yeah, you... Yeah, so, uh, so we're talking abstractly again, right? You see that? Uh, is this abstractly? Because this is really about you. Yeah, but you were about to say, for example, and then you were about to use an analogy. So I just jumped in there. Oh, I wanted to give you as an example. <laughs> for example, you playing video games and being addicted to it and learning from it. 
Ah, okay, my bad. Position. Apologies for, has, for has, interrupting you. No, it's fine. Has put you in a position where where you uh, where you now helping other gamers with similar issues, so that yeah, that that in a sense that mistake has has made you come out stronger and and absolutely teach you. And and what I would I would go even a step further and say that any type of you know like anywhere where you can improve, even in uh, in um, in the more comfortable uh, com- comfortable era of your life, even there you can you can push for, further and and do even more good. That's that's all I'm trying to uh, to point because for me. I truly see myself as the same as you, as the same as everyone. We're all equal. Like I, I, I do, I do think we're all equal, in our environment and how we grow up, for a big part shapes us where where we where we end up, uh, and and how we see things. But fundamentally, our essence is is the same, and we we all just want to align with reality, and and we all just life, and that's it. And uh, and basically. Um, like our ability to, you know, understand these mechanics and, and understand how it works allows us to just, you know, be a better version of ourselves. And there is no reason to, at, the, at a certain point, when you feel comfortable, say, oh, here is the line and this is where I stop. And that is why I just, you know, when you were earlier saying like, oh, yeah, maybe you have a, a different way of going about life and stuff, or maybe it's, 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 it's higher or well, you didn't use the word higher, but it was in the, in that direction. I don't see myself as I live my life at a higher moral uh, level or whatever. I just see, I, I just try to be consistent and truthful to myself, and I and I and I and I, you know, I put the bar where reality is, and 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 when I see how people are starving and stuff, it it really you know it it puts the bar quite high because I'm living a very very comfortable life compared to that, and even if people feel like I'm sacrificing a lot or even if they feel like, whoa, you really go out of your comfort zone. Because even when it comes down to games, I only play games as function to reach people. And, and if it doesn't suit the purpose to have an impact, I just don't do it because it's a waste of my time. Like, for example, right? Um, and, and, and I'm very functional. I, I'm, I've raised more... I think, five can I just jump in for a second? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. So, so you've just been, you've been like talking for a little while, and I just want to yeah, yeah, pause yeah. for a second and just process what you've said. Can I ask you a, a couple of questions? Yes, of course. Okay. Um. I just I just found my my attention waning a little bit, and I was having trouble following you. So it helps me to sort of just pause and make sure I I I, I, I respect that because uh, that I, shows I, you trying to actually listen, which is yeah. Um, I, I, I appreciate because you said that. a couple of things that I was really curious about, and I think I'd like okay. to understand those better before you keep going, so that yes. we do have Go sort ahead. of a common foundation. So you said that you set the bar where reality is. Yes. Do you think that that is different from what other people do? Um, that's a good question because I would say other people always set the bar where the reality is, and that's just how it is. But the thing is, people's reality can be, you know, can be very narrow, can be very small, can be just, you know, their family, and that's it. While the reality that I live in is, is is the planet like I really see and, and look at the issues all around the world and and these issues when they are not in people's awareness because they're not busy with it then it's not part of their reality and even their actual reality it doesn't exist it's only you know it's only when they see it on the news or whatever that they get confronted by it same with like for example um, I will give you another example like uh, the meat industry like people when they just buy buy meat they just you know there is the, the reality what, what, of an what animal are you, what, what are you doing again Theme? Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll like, yeah. I'll give the, I'll make the, I'll make the example personal. Like, if you know, if how, my how about, family, how about you just, I, I don't, I don't feel like I need an example. Can I actually, can we go the other route where I just ask you and and make sure, sure. I'm on the same Let's page? Yeah, thank go you. Go ahead. Okay, so you're saying that 
you set your standard to reality and that everyone sets their standard to reality and that some people's realities are narrow and some people's realities are planet wide. Well, like depending on your awareness, it's it's bigger or smaller. And that basically. Uh, so where, where is your awareness in relation to like other people? I see everybody as equal. Well, that's kind of interesting because because it, it the, you know you you make these you make these kind of like abstract philosophical statements, but when I actually listen to what you say, it implies something else. So maybe you can help me understand this because you sure. kind of say like so. I asked you, you know, do other people have objective realities? And then you said yes, and then you proceeded to make an actual comparison. So you said that their their realities are narrow, whereas my reality is planet wide. So well, you made a comparison like, there. I can I can give you a really good example. Uh, I'm sure you can, uh, but, but but please don't give me an example. I just want to make to sure. With, I know I know you effect. really want to give me an example, and it seems I, like you just really. I have will this, give you a very concrete one about just, myself. Just you but, can't you can't. I know you just really want to, right? You want to give me an example. Like, wow. do you know, to, do you see that within it's, yourself it's, that you really want to just give me that example? Like, you gotta, like, you gotta make me understand. You really need to tell me, like, do you see that within yourself? That there's something within you that's like a volcano that wants to explode and just give me that example. No, if you don't, uh, if you aren't eager to hear it, then there's no reason to bring it up. I'm not eager to hear it. I would like to ask well, you a question. And it's okay, not that I don't want to hear what you want to say. It's just that I find that I go understand ahead. you way better go ahead. Go ahead. without examples. Okay. So you made a comparison. So you say that all people are equal. I'm with you. You made a comparison where you said that other people have narrow realities and your reality is planet wide. Yes. Okay. So is there an intrinsic value judgment there? Like is one better than the other? One benefits hum humanity more than the other. So, so you're saying that one is better, that the planet-wide version of reality the, is better. The planet-wide version of reality definitely leads to more constructive actions towards society and towards humanity and life in general. Yes. Thank you very much for explaining that. That helps me immensely to understand. How was it? What was it like when I when I sort of was a little bit of an asshole, for which I apologize. And, and, and sort of jumped in when you were about to provide an analogy and ask you a question that you answered. Is that okay for you? Is it okay if I continue to do I that? I don't mind. Okay. I don't mind. If, if this helps you and if it serves that purpose, then you, you can even yell at me. I don't mind. Okay. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. It really helps me no understand. No problem, you. man. Anytime. Okay. Anytime. So, um, and if I cross the line, please let me know because it's not my intention. It's just, I, I kind of get this sense from you that there's just this really like, instinctive responsive reflexive desire to like help me understand through analogies whereas i just i just want to ask questions and if you answer them plainly i think we'll get there um, well i just have to i have to i have to be better at responding in a way that resonates better with you and i can do a i appreciate that. that yeah that's exactly what i'm asking you to do i'm, I'm so, so I'm, grateful. I'm you know i'm adapting a bit uh yeah thank you thank you yeah. i am too um, yeah. so, so, so it sounds like there is sort of a, an inherent value judgment about kind of the nature of reality and how much that your version of reality benefits humanity. Would you call it judgment or would you call it, uh, observation? Hi. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking. Oh, oh sorry. 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 It's a good question. Would I call it a judgment or would I call it an observation? I'm not sure. I mean, if it's, someone is, well, that was, I was going to give, if I'm busy with, you know, the environment, right. And, and I see where I put my trash to make sure that it doesn't, you know, that it doesn't pollute the planet and someone else just goes like whatever and throws the trash out and litters. I mean, like there's, there's, I, it's just a simple example. It is, it's a personal one. Or if, if I choose to not smoke because it affects what, my health in the long term. It's, what is this also, example related to? It all, the, the, the smoking example is also related to a uh, uh, more uh, uh, earth kind of awareness where I don't even deem my own life 
as 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 uh, as crazy as it is sound as myself my own it's like cells in my body they are there they just do what they gotta do for my life for me to to live just as much as i'm here part of the collective to uh to to give back life is not about me and uh if you have a if 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 you make life very small then you can believe it's about you even though it's not and that's why so many people experience a void in their life okay okay um is it okay if i i switch gears and just ask you questions in sort of a different vein sure let's go can you tell me a little bit about where you grew up and what your upbringing was like uh i i grew up in belgium uh my family was very poor my father is more came from a very poor rural uh, mm. place. My mother is Belgium. My mother was, uh, my mother was uh, raised Christian and my father was raised Muslim. Uh, I wasn't like, we were financially more strong around 14, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, my youth was pretty poor, but I didn't experience it as much. My father was quite... Uh, um, a very strong figure of authority while my mother was very caring and loving. Um, and uh, I've had, I have, since I was really young, I, I, I was very much in contact with uh, my brother and his friends, which were uh, a lot older, talking about philosophy and stuff. So mm -hmm. very young, I was already uh, thinking about stuff. When I was already seven, eight, I was already thinking about, you know, uh, like uh, signs and stuff and was very busy with it uh so what else yeah i guess that's that's uh i i've been always i've never i got a little bit you know like when i was young you know some fights in school but i was never like experiencing low self-esteem um and i was very analytical since i was very young uh, very very uh, observer very observative i didn't really develop identity when i was 13 um like puberty didn't hit me so hard and i just wanted to give back my entire life because i i re you know saw the wrong in the world and when i saw people that were struggling and me not there is just no difference between me and them it's just like why this is just unfair mm. and uh, if i can do something about it i got to do something about it because else yeah what if i'm that kid i mean if 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 the if the roles were different then this is yeah. just not okay and you said your your dad was an authority figure. What do you mean by that? Um, he was a very, uh, yeah, like very, what is the word? Um, he became very fundamental Islam uh, as he grew older and uh, was very, uh, just a very dominant person that... Uh, at times where quite, uh, it was quite, uh, I, I, I tried to avoid him when I was younger yeah. because it was quite, uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, just, yeah, it was not, not pleasant to be around him, but when it comes down to trauma or something, I, I, I never got traumatized by him or anything. Uh, uh, I, I don't know for my other siblings, if it was the same. Uh, I think I was uh, like I was always doing really well in school and such, so I didn't get the the, the heat. The, I was not the front line of the one that was taking the blame or frustrations of my father when he was angry. Um, so I was always like in my own little corner playing with Lego or whatever when I was a kid. So I I, I went through childhood pretty un 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 unscratched. Uh, unless, no, I'm not suppressing anything. There's nothing I forgot about. So, uh, there's a few things that happened in my past that, that had quite uh, a hard impact on me emotionally, but even later on in life, I managed to process them by reflecting on it. Like, for example, um, like, uh, you have in culture of, uh, Islam, they kill a sheep, like that kind of stuff. But I was already, you know. I always was already vegetarian before that uh, because of my brother. But seeing these kind of things made me also realize what are we doing? I mean, this doesn't make any sense. But uh, like it, it, it sometimes was hard for me to understand why grown ups can be so inconsistent. But I very quickly came to the realization that people are not perfect and that um, 
um, that even pointing out flaws or whatever leads to more harm than good. So, so yeah. Okay. So I became very pragmatic. In, in the way yeah, I, I, I certainly see that. You seem very pragmatic. You seem very analytical. You seem very philosophical. You seem to live by truths, right, that you've, you've discovered through reflection. Um, can I ask you a couple of questions just about some of the stuff that you said? Sure. Um, so you said that you didn't sort of fail. Uh, you never faced the brunt of uh, your father's anger that you were kind of off in the corner playing Legos and like someone else was facing the blunt or the brunt. Yes. Like my, my, my father in the past could be very, uh, uh, could be very aggressive verbally and, uh, uh, very, um, what is it? Uh, demeaning. Is that the word? Like really putting people down. Yeah. But I, I was never the target because, um, because I was really, I was basically the, how do you say it? The, exemplar kid to put it that way i always had good grades and uh so who was uh, the was target my brother and sisters how many sisters do you have two and are they also older? in in islam culture like definitely traditional women are not always treated the best so uh like that's that's yeah like that's also a big source of uh um them being the target and uh my older brother yeah he 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 had to deal with a lot of shit as well in that regards i'm sorry to hear uh, that it sounds like sort of a rough situation well i think every family has its own uh has its own uh, uh obstacles but he was there for us his entire life and he provided yeah um and do you uh, remember he, how you he, felt? He made mistakes. He definitely made mistakes, but sure. Uh, in retrospect, he he, you know, it could have been a lot worse. And he was actually, I would say, definitely above average when it comes down to giving him a score. Okay, <laughs> scored more than five as a father. Okay, so, so it, it sounds like he wasn't perfect. No one really is, and at the same time, you're grateful for, on average, most yeah. of what he did for you. Yeah, 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 definitely. Like, yeah. although in retrospect, uh, if I could go back in time, um, I, I would have, I would have been more capable of steering things into a, a, a more constructive direction, uh, because there is also there was a divorce and stuff. Like, I could have done things better, but I didn't have the the knowledge I have now when yeah. I was younger. When I was so, it sounds kid. like you don't feel like guilty don't about feel that. No, I don't feel guilty about it. I mean, this is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I just always try to do my best. Do you remember how, 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 how... Do you remember... No. So you sort of, like, rare, um, but you, you painted a sort of a vivid image of, like, you playing Legos in the corner while your dad was maybe yelling at your brother. Do you remember how you felt when that was going on when you were a kid? Yeah, I was, like, when, when these things happened, I was just, like, I was... It, it, it was getting tuned out. Like I, I didn't even, I was just like, yeah, they're too, because my, my brother and my sister were much older than me. They were already, you know, like, what was it? 16, 17, when I was eight, I was just like, yeah, it's, it's grown ups, uh, you know, like, uh, yelling at each other, whatever. Like, it's just almost like another day, you know, like there was no, it, it didn't, make me feel like cr crawling into a into a corner out of fear i was just there and i was tuning it out because yeah because uh it was it was just yeah in a sense normal <laughs> yeah even though in retrospect it's not that normal but it is what <laughs> yeah. it is. it's kind of weird right like what you, what you started to believe was normal that sort of wasn't normal well also... as a kid as a kid it just is like that i, I yeah. didn't even it's it's almost yeah, it's almost like you like earlier when you said like oh yeah it's not like anything traumatic happened but what you're sort of describing is like sort of traumatic but it was so normal that you sort of don't even see it that way. Yeah, but like although when you, when when I think about traumas and I hear what certain people have to go through, I yeah. I, I, I see myself as uh, you know privileged. Like some people got sure. really sexually abused, physically abused, mm -hmm. and, and really like you know like. Um, Emotionally yeah, I mean, abused. That, that makes sense, right? I think like you're kind of saying that other people in the world and I, I'm sort of seeing, um, you know, pardon me, because this is just kind of how my mind works, but something of a theme, like it's almost like, 
when you grew up, you know, that things were sort of, it almost sounds like a little bit unfair in terms of, of, you know, your dad sort of never picked on you because you were a good kid and, and that maybe he was doing other things, like, not he wasn't, like, sexually abusive or anything like that. And you've said very clear, I'm not trying to paint your dad out to be a bad guy because you've, you know, stated yeah. very clearly that. Uh, you know, on average, he was better than most, and you're grateful for what he provided. I'm not disputing that or trying to trap you or anything. At the same time, you know, I, I do think it's kind of interesting because I'm just trying to put myself, and I'm going to talk about me, or I'm going to use an analogy or use an abstract version. And I'm trying to kind of put myself in the shoes of, of um, you know, someone who grows up in a household where their dad is demeaning and, and verbally abusive, and how it would be strange for someone to kind of grow up in that sort of household if they're never the target. And oddly enough, I could sort of see how that could lead to this kind of fundamental realization, especially if that kid was super analytical, that the world is fundamentally like an unfair place. And even though I have it better than other people, it's really unfortunate that other people have it worse and that I wish things weren't like that. And I think that things should be more equal. Well, yeah, basically what you're trying to get that is where does my motivation come from, from doing good in the world? Yeah. I mean, I'm saying that, that the circumstance that you're, you're offering I would seems say, like, to if... fit with the motivation that you have, but I wouldn't say that uh, such a fundamental motivation comes from such a simplistic place. Yes, indeed. Like that's exactly what I wanted to, to answer. Like yeah. the, the, the biggest source of, uh, the biggest source of of uh, of doing what I'm doing is just the hard reality. Like, uh, um, and and the, the sure. experience of going through it, I have not even done that. I mean, I I, I didn't get I, I didn't grow up in a war zone. Uh, I, I never starved, and and I've never like what what I also this is actually something that's going to sound a bit weird, but it's it's a thought experiment I've done so much when I was younger. Um, and it's going to sound a bit weird, but it's, it's going to give you a better, better idea. That's why I'm, I'm bring, bringing it up. Like for me, the time and the place you're born is all just random. Like I, I could have born in during World War II. I could have been born. I could have been born a Jew and I could have been, you know, brought to the, you know, to the, the concentration camps. And if that would have happened and that did happen to many people, and if it would have happened to me and I would see my entire family, you know, basically getting killed. And, and me then being forced to do, you know, hard labor uh, with a gun uh, pointed at my head. If, if I'm capable in that scenario, right, to do more good in the world than if I am doing right now, then in a sense, I'd be a better person in that situation. And I cannot accept that. I cannot accept that, that fact. And that's a big reason why my bar is, is quite, you know, when I said earlier, my bar is hard, my bar is quite high because I know if I was in that reality, that's what I would be doing. I mean, like I would literally be working 16 hours a day uh, as a slave while I lost my family and not even be able to properly, you know, like give, say goodbye or anything, which is much more cruel. And if I could change at that moment, if, if, if I would given, be given the choice to live my life like I'm living now rather than that life, I would do it in a heartbeat. And I, I want to be able to do better than, than that version. And as crazy as it sounds, because I give this example a lot on the stream, it is a fact. Like if, if, if I was born and not even that, if tomorrow there is, you know, anarchy there, or whatever. There, there so yeah. It sounds to me like you're just sort of like really, it, it's such such a strange thing that you're kind of saying, because what I'm picking up from you, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't sort of get that you're not trying to convey this, but it's sort of weird. I mean, you're talking about almost like that what you're doing in this world is insignificant and that you could be doing so much more. No. Uh, what I'm doing right now is, is very significant because I'm putting the effort to do so. Okay. Like I, what, I've, what I've achieved so far is, is, is really a lot. Like to give you a few examples, just to give you an idea, I raised more than 25 million for children in need, making me one of the biggest philanthropists on the internet in a very effective manner, effective programs that I've even visited. I visited Ebola hit country to raise awareness. And I've also started a place, and that's why they call me a cult, where people can apply and work together that have the same mindset of wanting to help the world and, and you know, basically find like-minded people to, to do good in the world. And, 
and I'm and I'm I'm going to try to even do more, like trying to implement universal basic income in uh, in very poor uh, places and stuff. I'm very proactive, and I also do real talk every day where I talk about you know people reflecting on these things and such. And that's why also some people said to talk to you because you do similar things. Uh, um, so I'm I, I don't. What? Put, put myself down or anything. I always try to do better though. So it's not like I'm just, you know, also trying to brag or anything. For me, I just, I just try to do what is best at any given moment. And, uh, and yeah, that's so all. I think, you know, it's kind of interesting because I like you have this very interesting conversational sort of pattern and I'm not quite sure what to make of it where you'll say or do something and then you kind of deny it immediately afterward. And like what? Like, so for example, like, you, um, you just talked about all of your accomplishments and then like immediately afterward, like is the first time you said, I don't brag. Like earlier when you were talking about your upbringing, you were like, there was nothing traumatic, but my dad was kind of yelling and stuff like that. You just have this interesting. And sometimes when I like repeat back to you, what you say, it seems like there's a disconnect between the way I'm perceiving your words and what your intention is, which sort of makes sense because it, you know, it seems like you're very careful about being understood properly. Um, the reason why I'm making this clarification is because I've been streaming for a very long time. And whenever I bring up the amount of money I raise, people immediately go in the chat, charity shield, charity shield, he's bragging, he's bragging. So I, I want to make sure that I'm just trying to state the facts. But yeah, maybe if, if I was having a conversation just with you, I would not even mention this. It's because I I'm aware that, that more people watch. And this is really like the charity stuff. The moment I talk about the charity stuff, everybody goes like, oh, hey, there he goes again. Because they think that I used the good work that I did as justification does, to be a How does a it make leader. you feel when they say that? Well, honestly, now, like, I don't feel anything because I've already processed it. In the past, it was, it was, I, I had a hard time understanding why, but I've come to acceptance. I've, tom, I've come to understand why it happens. It's because, it, it's because people project very easily themselves and just see me as something that I'm not. They think I'm a cult leader. They think I'm a brainwasher. They think I'm scamming. Even though all these things are not real, they're not true. They believe that because they feel like it and that's it. Like, it doesn't matter what is true or not. When they feel like it, it must be true. And, and for me, as someone that is much more analytical, it's very hard to relate to it because if the truth tells me differently, it's, it's really very hard for me to, to deny it. But I've come to realize also with, you know, the entire post-truth world we live in and such that is becoming more and more strengthened with social media and the echo chambers created and stuff where people get, you know, their lies strengthened that it's just, you know, a normal day for them. And, and that's the thing, like, I've come to accept that because in the past, my frustration came from a lack of understanding. I was like, why? I'm doing all this good. Then I made videos even with, you know, like with Save the Children because I raised a lot for Save the Children. I showed video, I showed proof. People kept saying I'm scammers, even big streamers saying I was a scammer. Athene, I, I'm and concerned I that you have, a, you have a very subtle but powerful ego. Can I share some thoughts with you? Sure, sure. So... Like, let's just take this example, okay? So you were kind yeah. of saying that, um, you know, you you were you were you used to be like sort of uh, not really happy or struggling to understand because you still don't really talk about emotions at all. Um, you were saying that you didn't understand why these people thought this way about you, but that essentially that they're projecting, and even though they're incorrect, they just believe this, and so like you know, that, that that it's just like a misunderstanding on your part. What I think the, the really dangerous thing there is, is like, uh, you know, how do you know that you are not the one that doesn't understand? Because you're kind of saying like, oh, I'm obje objectively right and everyone else is projecting. Whereas how do you know that you're not the one who's projecting and they're not the ones who are objectively right? Because like, for example, I if I, if I, if I, I walked out, like, well, that, I understand that, but like with the specific example, it's very hard to do that because I'm talking about a fact. I mean, it's like, uh, if I say the money goes all to charity and it actually goes all to charity, there is no misunderstanding on my part because I know all the money goes to charity. I mean, there's evidence, everything. It's very transparent as well. So if people then come to me and call me a scammer, then I know it's a misunderstanding on their part. It's not Sure. Me. What about being a cult right. leader? 
Say what? What about being a cult leader? Well, I'm open. I'm open to uh, uh, to uh, um, I'm open to the idea that I might be. I don't think it is based on the evidence that I see, the properties of a cult leader. I don't think I am, uh, but there is a chance that I am, and that I'm just bullshitting myself. And that's that's the that's you know that's where I find it as a strength, where I I, I always assume that what I believe might be wrong. I don't think I'm a cult leader based on the data points I have, but there is a chance that I am a cult leader and I'm just not aware of it. I, but I, so far, nobody, nobody has happy, shown me. I, I, I'm happy to hear you so, sort of say that. I'm not saying that you are or you aren't, but I think this is this kind of like, for you to kind of admit that maybe you are bullshitting this entire thing, maybe you are a cult leader, that, that maybe you're wrong, um, I think is like a very important perspective to take. Right. And I, well, I think yes. that that yeah. I, can I share with you what I think sort of is is what I'm seeing. This sure. is just one one man's opinion. OK, so I'm not claiming this is truth. I'm not Go claiming it, it's reality. I'm just going to share with you what I see. I think that your mission is very, very real. So I think your your devotion to the cause is very, very real. Um, I think that you really do long to make the world a better place. And there are just a lot of like bizarre things that I think uh, the way that you relate to your emotions, the way that you conceptualize yourself, you kind of like view your beliefs as truth. Like, and I recognize that when I say that statement to you, you're going to respond by saying, oh no, all people are equal and my truth is no greater than other people's truth. Like, I get that you say that, but if you actually listen to the way that you talk, for example, when I point out this issue of like, a lot of people say that you're a cult leader, you kind of default to them being the ones that are projecting and you're the one who's factually correct. And I think part of the reason that maybe this goes on is because I, I do think that you're not, you have, it sounds like you've become accustomed to maybe numbing out emotions. I'm not really sure about this. This is like where I will be the first to admit that I don't really know. But generally speaking, if you look at data, a lot of times when people grow up in households where there is some form of abuse, even if they're not members, uh, uh, victims of, of the verbal demeaning or whatever, that they can develop like an interesting relationship with their emotions. So their emotions sort of affect them less. They learn to suppress things. And, and you sort of described a scenario that kind of fits with that, right? Like you, if it became normal to you. There's sort of like toxicity. There's like objective toxicity in your household and, it, and you've become normalized to it. It's become kind of like normal to you. And anytime we sort of talk about things, you sort of say you experience emotions but at the same time, like when I ask you about them, your mind sort of goes to this. And this is another a pattern that I've observed in some people, unclear if it, if it applies to you, but that generally the process of abstraction and pulling yourself out of the equation and being non-personal with the way that you view the world, being objective instead of subjective, separates you from some of those subjective influences. And in my experience... A lot of times when people are not aware of their subjective influences are the ones where they sort of lead to a logical conclusion that they think objectively is true, even though they're completely, but they think it's logically true because they're not aware of how their mind is shaping their impressions. I can, I can understand that you can make these kind of, you know, uh, connections. I do have to say, though, that when it comes down to emotions and emotional intelligence, um, I would say that I have that I thrive even more in that regards than when it's about cognitive intelligence. It is because I understand my emotions so well, and I've had an always a very you know honest conversation about how I feel towards myself and trying to understand them that I managed to get to a point where I am now. Because if it was suppressing suppressing mechanics that I would be using in order to to achieve what I have achieved. I would have already had a nervous breakdown. I would, I would like, I wouldn't have gotten where I am. I'm very stable and very uh, uh, fulfilled and, and satisfied as a person. Mm -hmm. And um, when certain strong emotional events happens, like for example, my father passing away, um, like I process them and 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 I and I cry and I and I feel the emotions and I try to understand and make sense of it, and 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 I and I, and I go through the grieving process just like anyone else. But because I have such an honest relationship with myself, 
it goes very fast. Like it goes much faster than with my siblings, for example, even though it's, you know, it's, it's of course unfortunate. And uh, what I'm just trying to explain is like this sense of separation that you're talking about, like that even is a, a very big trait of narcissism as well. Um, Do you think you're narcissistic? I, no, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so at all. Um, I wouldn't deem everybody equal if I was a narcissist. I would feel myself being better than others. I wouldn't work so hard as well to help other people if I would be narcissist because why? I'm better than them. Like, uh, Yeah, so, uh, so that's kind of interesting because I, I think this is, once again, uh, uh, like something that I'm having trouble understanding. And I think I'm going to have to wrap up in a few minutes. So I'll give you, uh, you yeah. know, kind of. I'm just kind of letting you know, but so I'll just give you an example, right? So like you make these, these abstract philosophical statements, like I believe all people are equal, but if we actually pay attention to what you say, you frequently compare yourself. For example, you just talked about how you process emotions more fully and more rapidly than your siblings after your dad passes away. And that's a pattern throughout this conversation. You say all people are equal, but by the way, in this particular example, I'm objectively better at processing emotions than other people. Like you, you use those kinds of examples all the time that sort of say, oh, other people yes, but, have a narrow re reality and I but, have a planet-wide reality. The thing is, though, equality does not mean uh, that uh, you can have certain traits that are, you know, factually more, uh, uh, more sure. advanced than others. I mean, like... So do you, do you think that narcissists... Equality is on a fundamental level. We are all equal as human beings. But sure. Equality automatically brings about that certain people um, that can contribute more than others, for example, uh, that, that that aspect also has to be part of the equation. And, okay. and uh, that's the practical reality of equality, the practical uh, reality of Athena, equality. I, I, have, yeah. I have one last question. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. Yeah. I apologize no, if it's I'm fine, being rude. It's fine. Do you think that narcissists believe that and I, I'm, I, don't, I don't know if you're a narcissist or not, so this isn't some kind of veiled attack. I'm genuinely curious um, because I have a follow-up question. Do you think that narcissists believe that they, are, that, they have, that they're objectively better in some ways than other people? I think like, narcissists, so narcissists glorify themselves. Yeah, so I think you have a very interesting kind of ego. So I think you have the ego of having no ego. So when I was studying in um, India, one of my uh, teachers once told me that there are two kinds of ego, and one is very subtle, and it's something that you see in people who are highly spiritual. One is the standard ego, which is kind of like narcissism, and one is the ego of having no ego. It's saying, oh, look at how everyone else glorifies themselves, but look at how I don't glorify myself at all. Like other people glorify themselves, but I don't. So there's sort of like a subtle ego of look at how egotistical everyone else is. Look at how everyone I, else projects. But I don't, I don't I, project. I'm not egotistical. I'm objective. I'm humble. I'm devoted to the cause. I'm pure. I can't. I know that you almost have to go, and that's why I want to respond to this in sure, a very. Sure, please. In a very, um, I do think that a lot of the conversation that we have had. Um, like um, comes from you trying to see yourself in me. And a lot of it is projection where you go through life in a more self-centered manner and you try to find that framework in me while, so for example, for the ego and these things where parts in your life where you struggled with it a lot. While for me, all these things are very irrelevant. Like I just go through life. I wake up. I do what I gotta do, and I go to bed. It's very simple. Yeah. And all these concepts and and this, you know, this like, oh, my experience or my past or stuff, is irrelevant to me. It's like, and it truly is. Like, if you get to know me or you see me, you would really be be a little bit confused. Like, oh, why doesn't he care about these things? And no, it is I, because I was confused up until this moment. But yeah, go ahead. But I yeah, think what, your explanation what is very helpful. Say, it's like, a, a lot of a lot of what a lot of your analysis is 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 filling the gaps with your own experience, which then automatically portrays something where you try to to see you know you you try to conceptualize and 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 see me as a you know from yeah from that angle while I just live my life and accept things for what they are, 
and 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 when I experience discomfort, I just take it and I just you know go about my day, and that's it. Like there is no there is no focus on the the self development or any of that because at the end of the day, we are yeah. what we are, and all these things are not that you know are not that relevant when you when you want to eat you, you got to eat and when you you know when you got to get water you get water things are actually very simple when you strip away all the all this all this noise and that's the way i live my life and 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 uh and there is very little to it like it's 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 actually quite simple i'm yeah. just saying like i think a lot of the analyzing that you're doing is uh coming from your perspective and trying to understand me through your world, which is, yeah. Uh, yeah, which is, which is, which is not, which is not as easy when, uh, when, when, when I go about life in a way where a lot of this identity structure and construct just doesn't really exist because yeah. I know it's not real. So, sure. Yeah. So I thank you for explaining I, I that. So, in a positive way, and this is not I, criticism. I, I didn't think it was a criticism at all. Or, I mean, okay. are, are you getting the sense that I'm? I'm very glad. So I've I've been very transparent with you about what I think could be going on. So, for example, I said like I think you have this other kind of ego called the ego of having no ego. I think that could yeah. be going on because I can't really know you after talking an hour and a half, right? Yeah. So I I think Athene, the way I'm approaching this conversation is by trying transparently sharing my impressions so that you can explain to me your perspective on it. Yes. Right. And so you've just explained to me that you think that when I toss something like that out at you, that it is a projection from my end. And in my well, experience, yeah, yeah, there's many parts in the conversation, but yeah, 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 yeah I, I agree. I'm, I'm simplifying things. I'm, I'm losing some nuance. So just one last thing that I would kind of leave with you is that oftentimes, and you're, when you're kind of talking about me coming from my experience, I completely agree. I'm absolutely coming from my experience. Now, I don't know when you say my experience, do you mean my personal psyche or my, do you mean my experience in life? No, your experience in life. Okay. So I'll share with you just one last thing. So generally speaking, when I, I'm a psychiatrist and when I deal with people who have narcissism, when their narcissism is challenged, they will frequently go to things like projection of the person who is challenging their narcissism. Right? So like if I tell you, hey, I think maybe you have this kind of ego the simplest way for your that kind of ego to hide is to debunk or de diffuse or challenge or pull the legs out of what I'm I'm trying to say. So you say like, oh, like it's not really a problem on my end. You're just projecting, which I could be projecting. I'm just sharing with you. I, I'm not saying you're narcissistic or that you aren't. I'm Can just I ask telling you. A question? Yeah. So let's say I would tell you you're a narcissist, right? Yeah. And you would start giving arguments why you're not right no ah uh, no no i would ask you why do you think i'm a narcissist i wouldn't start arguing with you immediately i would ask you where your perspective comes from and help me understand why you think i'm a narcissist but okay, that's so let's say that's I not you... what you do right you start arguing immediately and explaining to me why i'm wrong and how I'm projecting. I'll, I'll, I'll go a step further because like, sure. I'm not just asking you whether you're a narcissist. I say you are a narcissist because of this and this and that, right? And you respond to this and this and that. And you say like, yeah, this does not apply to me. And then I tell you, that's what every narcissist would say. Yeah, so I what's mean, your question? Way... Say what? You said, uh, let me ask you a question, but I haven't heard a question. Well, that's the question. If if but that's if that's I, not a question. If, well, like what 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 is your what is your response to 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 this? Because it's like a basically a catch twenty two at that point. It's no, like, no, it's not because because there's a problem with the assumption, right? So you said if I if I call you a narcissist and then you said and then I say I give you evidence and then you respond to that evidence. If you counter that evidence, and then I say but you're projecting. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that middle step between me and you is different. So when, when you say, if you call me a narcissist, I'm not going to respond to your evidence with evidence of my own. I'm going to stop and ask you why you believe that and help me. Uh, and I'm going to understand where you're coming from and why you believe that about me. So that's the difference. 
So if you, if you, uh, if you, uh, so uh, let, let, well, let if me, I would if I would present you with three cases, you either have, you know, uh, uh, the ego of not having an ego, or you have, you know, uh, a, a strong ego, or you have a weak ego, right? If that is the three, uh, points that I, you know, that I present and I say, this is, this is in this framework, you're either one of the three, right? And I'm saying like, oh no, that is, that is, that is based on your experience that you have these three, you know, these three properties and you don't see it wider. Then I am the one, uh, giving a argument because it's very directly connected to, uh, the reason why you said I wasn't potentially a narcissist I or, or have ego. Like I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the reason why you only have these three options in your explanation is because you're projecting your experience because if you would have a wider experience, you would have more versions than just no, these three. Well, so you're, you're, you're making, you're making a, a, a couple of big assumptions. So I do have other uh, options in my tool belt. I just simply don't think that they apply to you. Right? So I, I, uh, I'm not talking to you about things that I don't think apply to you. Then I misunderstood that. I thought yeah. you you were talking so I, about I, these these I'm three sharing, specific. I, I'm sharing when I say here's what I think could apply to you, Athene. I'm talking about the things that apply to you, not all of the possibilities. You were talking about your experience in India, where you were talking to your teacher and he was mentioning these three yeah. things. So it was not in direct correlation with me. It was based on your own experience. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. So like, I would assume if you would tell me about your experience, which is not directly connected to me, that it would have all options. And if it would just be in, in, in context to talking to me, you wouldn't even have to mention all three, you would just mention one. So then it's not so far fetched for me to assume that you were giving a full scope of what you were trying to explain based on your experience, which then made me mention, Hey, this is based on your experience. That's what you call projection, basically. I'm just saying, like, it's not like I'm trying to be, you know, deflective on what you say. I was just trying to pinpoint to the sure. argument you were giving me why, you know, why, uh, why these things could, could, could be the case. That's all. Like, yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Do you, yeah. Have I offended you in some way? No, not at all. Okay. I, Good. I, I, like, honestly... They're like, I, I, I know you're just trying to do what is best, uh, based on your own, you know, your, your own, uh, reference frame. And I try yeah, to do absolutely. the best as well. So to me, I'm not judging or blaming or whatever. I just, you know, I just thought it was interesting to have a chat with you and a call and, uh, um, cause people in my, in my viewer base and people in your viewer base were really, you know, very uh very interested in listening to a conversation so i thought it would be interesting and i completely it, agree like, man so can i offer um just a couple of other thoughts and then ask sure. maybe one or two last questions so first sure, of all um uh, athene i i you know just for the sake of completeness i i want to just repeat what i said earlier i i do think that your cause is venue very genuine and that your approach is just and that you really believe in what you're doing in my experience, so once again, talking about my reference frame, which is really the only reference frame I can come from, that can coexist with the ego of having no ego. And in fact, the people who, are, the people who develop an ego uh, of having no ego are the ones who are actually doing the kind of work that you do. So it's very common amongst people like monks. And it's a very, very subtle ego that's very difficult to detect. So whether that's going on with you or not, I, at the end of the day, can't really say but I'm noticing some signs that could point to that. Now, whether that's the case or not, I'm not sure. And I, I, I've sort of laid those out before, and, and you can kind of watch when I sort of talk about how you end up making comparisons, but you make overarching statements about truth of equality, but when you actually listen to what you say, you make lots of comparisons with other people. And that when you make those comparisons, you sort of treat them as a, as a reality as, a, as opposed to an opinion. Whether it's real or not, like, I don't know. Some of that stuff factually, sure. Like, you can sort of factually say that, um, you know, stuff went to charity or didn't go to charity. But when it comes to, like, who emotionally processes your dad's death the fastest, I don't know how you would know that. Because I, I don't think there are any external signs that 
sort of, of course, if, perfectly... I, if I'm talking to my siblings like regularly, I can see them carrying it much more heavily than I do, for sure. Like some of my siblings more than a year later are still struggling with it. Like, yeah, so, for me. And so, so yeah, I, I mean, that is that is not in my, I mean, it's just not in my head. It's unless I, for I can, some reason I'm, I can, I'm I suppressing can it. There you, I don't think so. there you go. There you go. I don't so, think so, but it is possible. But I, I, I don't. Think... I completely, I completely agree that you could be suppressing it. You may not be suppressing it, and that it would be very hard for you to know because that's the nature of suppression, right? Suppression is when our mind buries something so that we're not aware of it. That's the very definition of it. So I, yeah, but I then completely I experienced so many emotions when he passed away. Huh? Then I wouldn't have experienced the emotions, the emotional process, no, because the, I, like I, I don't think initially. So. Initially, uh, when it happened, I was the person to accept it the quickest. Like uh, okay. some people didn't, like some of my siblings didn't even accept that he passed away. Like so, it took them days uh, before they even realized that it Athena, happened. I, I really do not know enough about that situation to well, make yeah. a judgment about like, it. So, I yeah, mean, if, I, you know, you were there, you know what you experienced, you know yeah. what you saw, you're going to be the one who's who's best able to judge what actually happened. There's no way I can... Same thing. All I'm saying is that I think exactly what you said, which is that there's a possibility, possibility, yes. Yes. that y you suppress some kind of emotion because I think the evidence suggests that you grew up in a household where a lot of children learn to suppress emotions, i.e. playing with Legos while your brother is getting yelled at. And sometimes that leads to emotional suppression. I'm not saying it, it did in your case or that it happens now. I just, I don't know. Do you feel it? I actually do not know. I, I don't know when it comes to you. I really don't know. I'm just sharing with no, you. No, but I'm just, in general, when you suppress emotions, do you feel it in any shape or form? Yeah. Almost. You certainly. do feel it. Yeah. Because I don't feel it. I'm just saying like, what, if there's what, you any mean, feel it, feel it like emotionally or physically or what? In any shape or form, is there anything? Yeah. So, could so be... absolutely. So I think the biggest sign that you have suppressed or inactive emotions is actually your ego. So in my experience, the ego arises as a protective mechanism for emotions and allows us to not feel the emotions. So I'll just give you an example. Like if I'm attracted to a woman and I ask her out and she says no, then my ego becomes active and I start coming up with all kinds of justifications for why I asked her out and why she said no, instead of just feeling the rejection. So I'll start to tell myself, oh, like objectively, she's not that attractive logically, I just asked her out for these reasons. And then what the ego does is it goes to your intellect and hijacks the intellect. Because I'm sure you've observed that when people become narcissistic, you can't logically convince them of everything because they're logically convinced that they're absolutely correct. That their intellect is not functioning properly and is sort of like functioning due to these things like projection and narcissism. Can they see themselves change? I don't know. It's an abstract question. I'm not sure. I'm just sort of well, because can they see themselves change in general. You were talking about narcissism. It, it depends in general, depends on saying. the person. So generally speaking, when I point this out to them, I think a lot of value comes from it, right? So yeah. this is this is what I see that makes me think that you could have ego. One is that you know it sounds like you live a life where there is where people attack you in some ways, and generally speaking, when I think about that, I imagine that. At times in the past, it sounds like that hurt. You're kind of okay with it now. Or that people say like slandering things about you. You tend to be hyper-focused on rationality, logic, and abstraction. And when we actually... Oh, one second. Hold on. Hello? Hey, can I just wrap up? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry that it takes right. so long. Yeah. Sorry, I got to get going. Um, yeah. But that, that I, I sort of see you fitting this pattern, whether it applies to you or not, I'm not sure. But that generally speaking, a hyper rationality with abstraction and a lot of comparative statements without believing you're making comparative statements or that your comparisons are objectively correct, whereas other people's opinions are just opinions or projections speaks to me of the presence of ego. 
Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I mean, I think the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I, I respect you and I think you should reflect on it, which is exactly what I think you're doing and what you will do. And I, I think that's awesome that you're doing that. Um, and I have one last question for you. So do you want to collaborate? <laughs> that was the goal of this conversation for you, right? So let me ask you. Um, well, the answer the answer to that question lies in you. And the, the answer is, do you, do you, like, how far do you want to go to truly help people, basically? Like... And, and the conversation has shown me that you want to live a normal life and uh, you want to help people on the side uh, and combine them both and basically, in a sense, settle with that. And my question would be like, yeah, do you want to settle with that or do you want to take it further? Because you can maybe help even more. Um, that, that, because like for me, that is... That is the extent to which we can collaborate, because of course we can collaborate in lesser or bigger extent, but like the extent to which you want to get out of, you know, your comfort zone and really do good in the world for a big part defines uh, uh, how, how, how strong we can work together. Because of course we can have, you know, these talks because people seem to really love it. I mean, like, look at the amount of people that are watching. It's crazy. Like they, they like, they like this conversation. They like to see, you know, uh, us talking because uh, it's very interesting. So in that regards, that on itself could be interesting because I, I like to talk to you. It's not like talking with Destiny where it's really very, very, very sensational and yelling and all that stuff. This is much more chill and people seem to like that. And, and it's hard to even find an interest for these type of conversations. So in that regards, I think we can definitely collaborate when it comes down to practical action and, you know, like, like charity work and stuff. It's something, you know, we, we, could, we could explore in the future. So I would say okay. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't drop a no and, and I wouldn't drop a yes. I think we can, you know, we can definitely uh, have a follow-up conversation if that's something you feel like doing. Uh, and I will definitely reflect on things you said. And you can also do so if you think there was anything worthwhile. Uh, oh, I think there was on. a ton that was worthwhile. Yeah. So, yeah, like, uh, I, and, and your viewers... Uh, if they if they find it worthwhile, because I also understand if you know it's not something for them that I, I, I'm not going to you know be this uh, yeah this 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 guest that they just go like oh okay again this uh, some of this and uh, yeah maybe we can also you know like in the future spice it up because I've been very uh, I, I have been very yeah like like we've been very what do you call it um, surface it was a very surface conversation. And I do think if we go deeper, things will become even more interesting because it helps people to understand intent and such and, and, and help people. You mean uh, deeper people, philosophically? You know. Say again? You mean deeper philosophically? No, I mean deeper psychologically, really to the foundation of what drives us to do what we do and why we do it and, uh, and, and uh, analyzing it in a way that people can very easily relate to. Because comfort, for example, is a word everybody can relate to. It's very easy to wrap your head around. Like, oh, yeah, sure. I'm trying to, you know, settle and find comfort in what I'm doing. It's easy to, to get, like, people that procrastinate, people, you know, that don't procrastinate. It's very common ground. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and basically uh, being able to, to, to simplify everything we talk about that sometimes can, can look complex on the surface. Like, I mean, this conversation... It sometimes was really all like a little bit all over the place at times. I think, dude, becomes I, much more, yeah, I really got to go because I literally have a car that's waiting outside with my kids. Uh, so, I understand, I it, understand. It's but yeah, like if you're interested, we can definitely have another call. And okay. um, yeah, like uh, I, for me, it was interesting. I, I like to have this chat. Do you yeah. want to collaborate more in the future? I have no idea what that means because you speak in such philosophical and broad terms that I, like I don't if even it know. Would be, if, if it would be having more of these kind of conversations, for example, on the stream. Yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. I, I really got to go. I, I, um, I'm going to say the same thing you said, which is maybe not a yes and not a no. Okay. I just That's have good. to think about whether this is aligned with the kind of work that I'm trying to do. Like I, I understand. If, hey, what's up? Yes, I understand. I understand. Okay. Okay, I'm coming. Love you. <laughs> yeah, I'll Love let you, you too, Athene.
Okay. I, I had to hang up on the dude because I, I really got to run. My kids are going insane. It's cold outside. Okay. So let me just stop real quick. Okay. Wow. Talk about, um, I, I got to go, but I hope that wasn't rude to a theme. I will apologize to him later. Anyway, guys, I thought, I mean, I thought that was interesting. You know, we'll see. I don't know if you guys are, you know, if that was, I don't know how much of that was voyeuristic for y'all, but it really wasn't voyeuristic for me. I mean, I'm not trying to upset him or anything. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for coming. We're going to stream on Sunday from six to eight and, uh, we're going to do like more Q and A and stuff, but I really just like literally have to run out of the room. Um, but love you guys. Thank you for everyone who showed up and, uh, yeah. Have a nice evening.